Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming former U.S. Ambassador to Armenia, Mr. John Marshall Evans. Bari Yeriko, Tiknaik Yev Paranaik. My name is John Evans, otherwise known as Hovanes Yevans. <laughs> and it's my honor this evening to present to you some of the good and great people who are gracing us with their presence here tonight. His Eminence, Archbishop Hovnan Derderian, Primate of the Western Diocese of the Arch Armenian Church. His Eminence, Archbishop Barkev Mardirosyan, Primate of the Diocese of Artsakh. His Eminence, Archbishop Mushek Mardirosyan, Prelate, Western Prelacy of the Armenian Church. Minister Plenipotentiary Valery Makurptunyan, Consulate General of Armenia in Los Angeles. Mr. Robert Avetisian, Permanent Representative of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic in the United States. The Honorable Ed Jurijan, former United States Ambassador to Syria and Israel and my first boss in the embassy in Moscow. Congressman Ed Royce, Chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Zare Sinanyan, Glendale City Council. Ardashes Ardi Kasakyan, Glendale City Clerk. Let's give them all a big round of applause. <laughs> My appearance with you tonight is just a pop-up appearance. Uh, I've been told I have three minutes. So here goes, one thought for all of you. The Armenian American community and the US government have done some very good things in the Republic of Me Armenia over the last 25 years. Some we have done together, some we have done independently. And without in any way disparaging other things that have been done, let me say simply, that the single most important thing we have done together, in my humble opinion, has been to found and foster the Armenian, uh, the American University of Armenia. I think that's all I need to say, but I would just make one final remark. Some of you know that one of the two books I published this year is called, Therefore God Must Be Armenian. <laughs> and I just want to say that tonight it's actually true because the voice of God that you will be hearing during the evening is that of Haik Boyajian. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chairman of AUA's Board of Trustees, Dr. Lawrence Pitts. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The lights are too bright, so I can't see, but the nearest faces. Thank you all for being here. Um, tonight, you'll be hearing bits and pieces of AUA's history uh, by the various speakers over the course of the evening. My happy task is to introduce you to some of the makers of that history, and they'll be coming on the stage in just a minute. To start with, I would like to um, introduce the AUA Board of Trustees. About a quarter of them will be on the stage with me because they're part of the history of AUA. I'm gonna call the names of the others very quickly. I'd like to ha have the house lights up 
have the trustee stand, hold their hand up. Do not applaud until I get through the whole list or it'll take forever. So with that, um, uh, Zavin Akian, if you could have the house lights, please stand. No, no applause, no applause till the end. Um, Susie Antunian, Father Mesrop Aramian, uh, Harutune Ar Armenian, Carol Aslanian, Ed Avedisian, and hold your hands up so people can see you. Um, Adam Kablanian is back here. Uh, Ann Karagosian. Uh, Sam Simonian, I think, is not here. Sinan Sinanian, one of the co-chairs for tonight. Uh, Gerald Terpanjan. Uh, Veronica Zonabin. And Yervant Zorian. So to all of the trustees, thank you very much. going to be easiest if I have the whole group come out. Because everybody is here. So what I want to do now, I'm going to start with the people who actually first recognized the value to Armenia that a new university with a Western style education might provide. These are some of the people who had that initial imagination. Um, Miran Agbabian. I'm going to, again, please hold your applause till I get a cast of thousands up here, otherwise. So, uh, Armand de Karakian. Um, the wife of Stepan Karamardian. Come on out. And so, these, these individuals, so Miran Babian was the, uh, one of the initial faculty the along with Armin Karakian. They can't hear you. Speaking. I'm sorry. So uh, Miran Agababian, uh, <laughs> so Miran was one of the initial faculty, Agbabian was one of the initial faculty along with Armin Karakian, and a third faculty member, um, Stepan Karamardian, was one of the founding three faculty members who actually got it started when there was no heat, no light, 100 students really starting from, a, from shoestrings. Um, Armin uh, uh, Miran was the original, uh, the founding president. Miran was the founding dean of engineering and Stefan was the founding business dean. Uh, and of course, they could not have succeeded as they did without their wives. And so I particularly wanted uh, Nelly de Karakian. Elizabeth Agbabian, who you all know, and Seta Karamardian. So I wanted to thank them. Okay, thank you. Um, of course, another important founder was uh, Louise Manugian Simone, who many of you know. Um, <laughs> Louise couldn't join us tonight. We're sad that she can't be here, but she sends her best wishes. Uh, Louise has been essential both to the founding of AUA and subsequently uh, to its life. So we have an enormous debt of gratitude to Louise. Now I'd like to recognize the institutions that helped make AUA possible. Um, so the uh, Armenian General Benevolent Union, uh, and I'll ask uh, Sinan Sinanian, who is uh, Vice President of the AGBU Central Committee, uh, to come on stage on behalf of AGBU. Uh, AGBU was fundamental in the initial financing of AUA. Without their support, it could not have happened. Um, the Republic of Armenia, obviously, was an essential partner at the outset. They provided the initial university building for classroom, which had been the Communist Youth Center. So it was an appropriate use for a communist building turned over to AUA, and we're they're represented by Deputy Consul uh, McDumian. Mag uh, McDumian, so the Consul, so thank you. Um, and then the third institution that was fundamental in the early life and continuing life of AUA was the University of California. 
UC accepted AUA as its only higher education affiliate and has lent many UC faculty to serve as, teacher, serve as teachers, deans, uh, presidents over the years. Uh, it probably helped at the time the affiliation was proposed that Dor George Dugmajian was governor and two of the regents were prominent uh, Armenians and, and wonderful supporters. So the UC is represented by Bill Fraser, who was the UC provost who introduced AUA to the regents. <laughs> the, 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 the current provost at UC, uh, Dr. Amy Dorr, who's the provost and executive vice president for UC now. And um, uh, Mrs. Meredith Kachigian, who was a regent at the time that AUA affiliated, affiliated with UC. So I want to thank all of these. One, one last person that I'd like to recognize is Dr. Yuri Sargshin, who a few of you know, but most won't. Um, Dr. Sargshin was, read, was a, a rector at the Armenian Polytechnic Institute uh, at the time of the earthquake. And he was a, a, a superb academician, uh, a member of parliament in 1991 when uh, uh, independence was voted, member of the Armenian Academy of Sciences, and has been a steady proponent for AUA. He has helped AUA integrate with the other universities there. He's been a strong friend uh, to AUA, and I'd like to uh, have Dr. Sargshin uh, come out as well. And so, um, okay, they will, there's some little trophies that I will give them as quickly as I can. So, uh, one last person, just uh, not a founder, but a very important player. Uh, Dr. Harut Aminian was the uh, president, second president of AUA for 12 years and certainly very key in the early days of AUA. And so Dr. Aminian was, uh, stood a few minutes ago as one of the uh, current trustees. Um, I'd like to ask Dr. Agbabian uh, to make a couple of comments on behalf of this very excellent group of people and I appreciate your letting me introduce you to them. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is a very special opportunity for those of us who started the university 25 years ago and all the others that in got into the picture and they became very active members of the uh, group that uh, is in charge of the university. I was given the opportunity to say a few words and I think I'll do that now. Well, the time and conditions in Armenia were right for the creation of an American University of Armenia. And the role of leadership could have also been assigned to somebody other than myself. I can only say that I was that fortunate person who with the help of my colleagues at AGBU, the University of California, and the Armenian government took the challenge and proceeded to do what I considered the right thing to do. I am often asked, what moved you to do it? I knew full well what education had meant to me in my personal life when the opportunity arose to do something constructive to our homeland I took the challenge and I thank all my colleagues who joined with me to work for the education of the youth of Armenia. It has been indeed a new beginning for a new generation. What happens in Yerevan now will influence the future of all Armenians. And that is why thinking in terms of 100 years is not unrealistic. Armenia is under new leadership since independence. What it will do in the next year or in the next decade will influence the future of Armenia in the next hundred years. Let us think of the man or woman standing on the hills of Yerevan 100 years from now, looking at the city. 
what the person on those hills will see in 100 years, what has taken shape. The contribution of the American University of Armenia is an essential part of that development. And here are the leaders at the uh, here with me. And I think that uh, the university has indeed performed better than any one of us expected, thanks to the support that the university has received from all of you. Thank you. Dr. Fraser for the University of California. <laughs> to Armin and Nellie de Karakian. <laughs> to Sedekara Mardian. <laughs> and to Dr. Sargshin. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chair of the AUA Development Committee, Mr. Adam Kablanian. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to start by thanking the two gala co-chairs, Zaven Akian and Sinan Sinanian, for their leadership in guiding the gala committee. I would like to also recognize and extend special thanks to Lorraine Alexander, who has tirelessly and single-mindedly been working on this gala for over a year with the help, <laughs> help of wonderful and dedicated committee members representing the larger LA Armenian community. You can find their names in the gala book. Now, Lorraine, Ladies of the Gala Committee and Rafi, please stand up. <laughs> bravo, bravo. This is an outstanding gala and a sold out event. Thank you very much. I am honored to be part of this team and it has been my pleasure working with you all. Thank you everyone for being with us tonight in support of AUA. This is a sold out gala and it would not have been a success without your participation and support. I also would like to recognize and thank all of the gala benefactors and the sponsors listed in the program 
for their unwavering support and commitment to AUA and for investing in the future of Armenia. I also would like to thank and recognize a special donor who came from the East Coast to be with us tonight, Sarkis and Ruth Berevian, for recently donating $400,000 to AUA's endowment. Thank you. And this is just in. Mr. and Mrs. Gargan donate $25,000 in honor of uh, Haraj Dumanian. Thank you very much. Every institution undergoes different challenges at various periods in their development. We have just heard from Larry Pitts about the conception of AUA and the visionary people and organizations that came together to work to create AUA 25 years ago. Last year, when AUA was looking to expand its reach by enhancing its programs, we needed an immediate injection of unrestricted capital to support these important initiatives while we built a long-term endowment fund. To meet this need and help keep AUA on the right trajectory, we created the 100 Pillars of AUA. The 100 Pillars of AUA is a program of 100 benefactors who pledge to support the mission of AUA in the most fundamental way through unrestricted giving that will allow the university to address its most pressing needs. With an unrestricted gift of $10,000 per year for five years, each of the 100 pillars will help establish a solid platform from which the leaders of tomorrow can leap forth. The mission of AUA is rooted in the firm belief that its students, if students are exposed to contemporary teaching and learning practices, if they are armed with the skills needed for the future, and if they are nurtured in an ethical learning environment, they will become the beacons of tomorrow and the foundation for Armenia's future. I am pleased to say that we have 60 pillars so far, and 30 of them are here with us tonight. <laughs> they are listed they are listed in the program book, and now I would like to have them stand up and to be recognized. Please stand up. Thank you for being an AUA pillar and for helping build the foundation for AUA's next phase of growth. If you are not a pillar yet and would like to join your compatriots in contributing to the future development of AUA, please come and see me or any AUA board member or gala committee member. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the screens for a glimpse into the world of AUA. Trailblazing, challenging, and unique. Reason and unity. Deep valuing of your cultural historical past. A bridge between Armenia and the world, and a bridge between Armenians and the diaspora. The idea came about after the 1988 earthquake. It was in a conversation with a group of professors and director of the Polytechnic Institute 
Yuri Sarkisian, Mirna Agbabian, and I prepared a proposal and sent around to a number of Armenian and American organizations uh, suggesting the idea of establishing an American university in Armenia as a positive, constructive response to the devastating earthquake. The idea was to do something that would be sustainable and would help create the new Armenia. Luis Simon, who was the president of the Armenian General Benevolent Union, responded positively, said this is a bright idea, we want to do it and we will provide funding for it. So AUA gives uh, an opportunity to start your career here actually through uh, work-study programs and AUA gives the same opportunity to start your career here in the university and to gain uh, invaluable experience. AUA is actually cooperating with so many employers in Armenian market sphere and I got to know them. I also got to know the, some of our alumnas that are actually very uh, accomplished. Someday I will be one of those accomplished alumnas of AUA and will be very happy for that. AUA is a very important institution for Armenia. Even though it's a small institution, it's made a big difference in the kind of education that's available to students in Armenia and also by bringing together a community of scholars around the university, especially our younger faculty, who contribute greatly both to our students and to research and policy in Armenia. <laughs> Whether it is the School of Public Health uh, with their outreach in order to address issues of health in Armenia, or whether it is the Ecopian Center, AUA is actively involved in making an impact upon Armenia uh, through these various venues. Yes, in case Arachin Tarvanit and Bakalavri, Sxelem Ashatel Hamatranum, we had Dasan Tatsunink, or Hamatak Ham Bakalavri and Magistratura of San Honor of Ink Sovorum, Avain Persevorum at Dasin Tatskum, Magistrosi, Erekis Maker in Snekatalov, Ashatanki, Arachark Arez, Arten Mitalia, and La Bashatanum, Silvat Ashatakis and Sumainte. More than seventy percent of our graduates are working in Armenia. They're living and working in Armenia in lots of different environments. We do very applied policy research which usually has a specific client, such as USAID or the Open Society Foundation. My graduate thesis topic at AUA was on aquaponics, a method of combining fish and vegetable farming without the use of soil. My thesis allowed me to apply my engineering and optimization knowledge to solutions that can have big environmental benefits. Today I'm continuing to work in the same field in a private company. At AUA, everything seems possible. It's like things can improve, they can change, and you are the change. One of the partnerships that we formed, that we actually helped create, is the Entrepreneurship and Product Innovation Center, or EPIC. For the first time, we'll have a dedicated center on campus for students, alumni, faculty, to get together an entire ecosystem of startup culture, of entrepreneurship, and create value through forming new companies, taking products to the market. Personally for me, AUA has changed the way I see the world. Many of the courses in AUA gave me unique vision on how simple ideas can be developed into innovative products and bring those ideas to reality. Currently, I'm involved in two projects. Uh, one is design and development of the first Armenian mobile device, ArmTab or ArmFoam, which are manufactured here in Yerevan. The other project is innovative approach to optimization of public transportation in Armenia, which I started as a master thesis project here at AUA, and I hope this is just the beginning. This is where the future is being built. For me, AUA is about personal development, it's about inspiration and motivation. Friendship, knowledge, optimism. Integrity, service, academic excellence, and a strong Armenia. I sincerely believe that AUA is the best investment the Armenian diaspora has made in Armenia.
Ladies and gentlemen, President of the American University of Armenia, Dr. Armin Der Kurerian. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Honorable clergy, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is truly exciting to be here and see this distinguished crowd gathered in celebration of the 25th anniversary of the American University of Armenia. On behalf of the entire university community, including our students, alumni, faculty, and staff, I express our deepest gratitude for your presence and support. I want to especially thank the benefactors and sponsors of this event, as well as those who have supported the university over many years, some of whom are with us tonight here. It is through your generosity that, a university, it, that the university is able to prosper and serve our homeland. My special thanks go to the members of the organizing committee, the many volunteers who worked tirelessly for several months to ensure tonight's success. Special thanks to the co-chairs, Zaven Akian and Sinan Sinanian, and our vice president of development and external relations, Lorraine Alexander, who led the effort, and her team members, Rafi, Haik, Matt, Kayane, and Marisa, whose diligence made this event the success that it is. I also want to recognize my executive team members who are here from Yerevan. Please stand as I call your names. Our Provost Randall Rhodes, our Vice President of Operations, Ashot Hazarian, and our Vice President of Finance, Gevor Koyunia. The American University of Armenia was established 25 years ago during an extremely difficult time in the history of Armenia. The country was still coping with the effects of a devastating earthquake, the Arsakh Liberation War was ongoing, and the country was in severe shortage of energy and other essential commodities. Starting a new university under these conditions seemed unwise, but it is during times of adversity that unique opportunities arise. We started on September 21, 1991, the same day as the Armenian parliament declared independence. We had 101 students in three master's degree programs. 25 years later, we have more than 1,800 students in eight master's degree programs and three bachelor degree programs. <laughs> In addition, we now have a university extension that offers continuing education or preparatory courses to more than 3,000 students each year, nine research centers that offer solutions to critical national and international problems, a vibrant program of digitizing classical and Western Armenian literature, and the Turpanjan Rural Development Program, which trains and assists entrepreneurs in rural areas of Armenia to start and manage their own businesses. We have enhanced and expanded our facilities threefold with modern classrooms, auditoria, offices, food facilities, and student dormitories. And we are proud to have the best English language library in the region, serving more than 15,000 patrons from within and outside the university. Along the way, we have achieved accreditation through the WASP Senior College and University Commission, one of the six regional accrediting agencies that are rec recognized by the United States Department of Education, as well as licensure from the Minister of Education and Science of Armenia. Our affiliation with the University of California has been further strengthened by exchange agreement with several of the campuses, including UCLA and UC Irvine. These recognitions and affiliations are testament to the quality and rigor of our curriculum and cur curricular and co-curricular programs. These accomplishments have been possible through the dedication and hard work of our faculty and staff. I would like to acknowledge my predecessors, Dr. Mihran Agbabian, 
the founding president of AUA, who laid out the institutional framework of the university. <laughs> Dr. Harichun Armenian, during whose time during whose time accreditation was achieved, and Dr. Bruce Bogosian, during whose time the undergraduate program was launched. <laughs> Among many AUA policies that ensure inclusivity, fairness, and academic excellence, we take pride in our policy for need-blind admissions. We evaluate and admit student applicants to our degree programs based on their academic achievements, irrespective of their ability to pay the tuition. Once admitted, we evaluate their financial capacity to determine whether each student needs financial aid in order to attend AUA. Even though our tuition for our mini citizens is low relative to other American universities in the region, for many students, it's, it is still prohibitive due to the depressed economic conditions in Armenia. It is by offering them financial aid scholarships that we are able to enroll students from all economic strata in the country, thus creating a socioeconomically socio diverse learning environment. Today, more than 45% of our students who are citizens of Armenia, Arsakh or Jabakh, or our Syrian Armenian refugees receive financial aid scholarships that enable them to study at AUA. As you all know, a major portion of the proceeds from this event will be used for student scholarships. On behalf of all those students <laughs> who will be able to attend AUA because of your generosity, I thank you. <laughs> 25 years is not a long time for a university. We have a vision for our next 25 years that includes more undergraduate and graduate degree programs, including doctoral programs, and an expanded campus with enhanced facilities. In fact, next year, we will be starting a new Bachelor of Science degree in Engineering Sciences and, an, and a Master of Science degree in Management. We have acquired a large parcel of land near the campus where we hope to construct our future science and engineering building. Last March, we received two buildings as gifts to the university by George and Carolyn Najarian. One of these buildings <laughs> one of these buildings will be refurbished as a residence hall and it is available for naming should any of you be interested. The yes the other building will house academic programs and will be named Carolyn, uh, George and Carolyn Najarian. We also plan to have a larger and more diverse student population that includes 20% from abroad, and we plan to create and consolidate teaching and research centers of excellence that are recognized internationally. In short, we want to help make Armenia a global destination for high quality education and research. To realize this plan, we need your support. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to make three very special announcements. First, in recognition of the very decisive role that Mrs. Louise Manukian Simon has had in the founding of the American University of Armenia for her very generous support of the university since its inception, and in appreciation of a special endowment that she has established in support of the College of Business and Economics, effective immediately, the AUA College of Business and Economics is named Manukian Simon College of Business and Economics. <laughs> Second, in recognition of the generous support that Mr. and Mrs. Zavan and Sonia Akian have provided the university for many years, 
including scholarships for hundreds of students, support for the construction and furnishing of the AUA Akian Art Gallery, and for many other projects, and in appreciation of a special endowment that they have established in support of the College of Science and Engineering, effective immediately, the AUA College of Science and Engineering is named Zaven P. Akian College of Science and Engineering. <laughs> I would like to ask Zaven and Sonia to stand and be recognized. We, th we thank them for their unparalleled gen generosity towards AUA and our members. Third, in recognition of the vital support that Mr. and Mrs. Gerald and Patricia Turpanjian have provided the university for many years, including scholarships for more than 3,000 students, support for the Turpanjian Center for Policy Analysis, an establishment of the Turpanja Rural Development Program, and in appreciation of a special endowment that they have established in support of the School of Public Health, effective immediately, the AUA School of Public Health is named Gerald and Patricia Turpanjian <laughs> School of Public Health. We thank Gerald and Pat for the unsurpassed generosity that they have shown towards AUA and many other Armenian causes. Uh, a special pam pamphlet that describes these no namings and brief biographies or benefactors will be shortly distributed by the AUA staff. Let this pamphlet be a special keepsake of our 25th anniversary celebration. I would like you to know that our College of Humanities and Social Sciences and several degree programs and research centers are available for name. <laughs> as are several buildings and facilities. So if you're interested, please contact. Thank you for your attention. Enjoy your dinner. Where is he going? His Eminence, Archbishop Barkev Mardirosyan, Primate of the Diocese of Artsakh. Mbariyeko. <laughs> Garabagit Sorek, Yete Hokiorakanka, Amenas Kazbit Serana Kortni, Ambox Mijotsarum Kortni, Heto Charel Kasek. Lav, Dastira Kutsuna Verchats of Hima, Yezor Serane Katesa Bolor Utumen, Matkimech Arotkare Ortnezi, Batima Bolorus. Banaki pes vodki and kagnum, vorpes apash harutun hair merden kasum, vodki kagnek. Boloret measin, vorpes hai kristonianet, zivori pes. Inje tevek, ortia termer Jesus Christos amen, hair mer.
Zik. Ortnia lini mijo tsaruma segana yevduk bolorat amen. Bari bailum. Ladies and gentlemen, dinner is now being served. Kindly stay in your seats. Bon appétit. Bari achorjag. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the screens for a special message from Representative Jackie Spear of San Francisco and San Mateo, co-chair of the Congressional Caucus on Armenian Issues. Good evening, dear friends. Thank you for inviting me to celebrate the American University of Armenia's 25th birthday. I'm sorry that I couldn't join you in person for this very important occasion. As one of only two Armenian American members of Congress, I've always drawn great strength and unshakable resolve from my Armenian ancestry. This includes our rich history and the horror of genocide that our ancestors fought to overcome. And that must never, ever be forgotten. I was proud to carry the resolution of condemning the Armenian Genocide for many years during my time in the California Legislature, and I'm equally proud today to serve as a co-chair of the Congressional Armenian Caucus. Armenia's greatest natural resource is its brain power. That's why I'm a strong supporter of AUA's educational mission and especially pleased that you are affiliated with the University of California, my alma mater, with one of the greatest institutions of education in the United States. By investing in Armenian minds, AUA is showing the world that we can best achieve strong U.S.-Armenia relations through mutual education in addition to diplomacy and aid. Together, let us vow never to forget the atrocities that Armenians have suffered and stand firm with Armenia against those who try to deny these crimes against humanity. And together, let us look to the future as our nations work together to uphold the core principles of democracy that Armenia and America hold so dear. AUA graduates are helping Armenia to grow and to thrive. Despite these challenging times, let us look towards a future of mutual growth and prosperity. Have a wonderful evening and celebrate AUA's most significant contribution to the intellectual development in our beloved Armenia. Once more, please direct your attention to a special message from Representative Jim Costa of Fresno, member of the Congressional Caucus on Armenian Issues, who recently spoke at AUA. Good evening. I'm Congressman Jim Costa, the representative of California's 16th Congressional District, which is located in the heart of the San Joaquin Valley. The valley is home to many Armenian families, who immigrated as a result of the genocide. As someone who comes from Portuguese immigrant family myself, I enjoyed growing up with the Armenian neighbors, the Kazarians, the Abrahamians, the Collegians, whose Armenian heritage has added so much to our community. And while I may be an Odar, when I'm with my Armenian friends, my name could be Costigan. This summer, I had the opportunity to visit Armenia for the first time and spent part of my trip at the American University of Armenia. And being in Armenia and visiting AUA truly felt like coming home. The students, the faculty, and the staff at AUA were warm and welcoming. I am proud that the United States and my alma mater, Fresno State, home of the Bulldogs, have formed uh, a partnership 
a sister university relationship with AUA so that we can exchange further ideas and research and development for both universities. This partnership also includes a student exchange program, giving students the ability to learn and experience the different cultures. I'd also like to highlight that Fresno State is the only university in America to have a monument on campus dedicated to the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. So tonight we have much to celebrate, 25 years of uh, success for both the American University of Armenia and we also celebrate the, the, the new independence of the 25th anniversary of Armenia. The country has a long, rich heritage, the first country in the world to adopt Christianity. I just wish that I could be there with all of you to honor the university's founders, their families, and everything this university has accomplished. So here's to continued success for AUA and a long-lasting friendship between Armenia and the United States. So as a, a kid from Fresno, the home of William Soroyan, please accept my best wishes for a memorable and wonderful evening. Thank you and God bless. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage world-renowned soprano, the fabulous Isabel Bayraktarian. This song was by um, uh, what's called a peace song or Khanjukirk by Khachadurian, one of the titans of Armenian music. And there's no better fit to this evening than this song um, because, you know, in Armenian we celebrate or we toast by saying Genatsev to your life. However, the poet goes on to say, well, you will have a blessed life if you toast with Armenian wine. 
So I hope you're having Armenian wine today, <laughs> or you wish you were. If not, you have to go to Armenia. Um, for the next selection, um, I'd like to uh, perform for you a song by Gomidas Vartabed. Speaking of Titans, he's the father of Armenian folk songs, and um, he is, to me, a link to my past. Without him, I wouldn't have been able to tap into the many, many riches that we as a culture had. Um, and um, he's associated always with, sing with songs that are kind of on the dark side. But he has written some very interesting songs as well, you know, mainly um, these are folk songs, so um, um, complaints to the mother-in-law, or um, which we all know about that. <laughs> yes, and uh, uh, lullabies and, and, um, um, and interesting songs. However, today, um, I would like to sing for you Ziranizar or the apricot tree. You know, Ziranizar, the apricot tree, what, it's one of our national identities. Huh? And uh, the poet goes on to say, the swaying of your branches represents our own culture being at the mercy of the winds of life and how it scattered, uh, scatters us to many seas of the world. because this is a festive event, I must end on a happy note. Um, complete change of gear in terms of composers. I would like to offer to you a song by the 19th century Italian composer, Giacchino Rossini. He's known as an operatic composer of effervescent um, operas that celebrate life, that celebrate uh, the winning of good over evil through wisdom, wit, and humor. So this is La Danza, or the dance, 
um, and it's um, it just says, uh, let's uh, sing and dance all night, and uh, let's blame it on the tarantula that bit us, and uh, we have to sweat it off, and that's why we have to dance all through the night. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Dr. Eric Israelian of Survival Pictures. Thank you very much. Thank you to all of you, and thank you to the organizers and for the leadership of American University of Armenia for allowing us to be celebrating with you tonight. Um, I personally don't ever feel like it's uh, appropriate for me to be up here by myself, particularly because it's such a tremendous team effort to put this film together. So uh, I'm going to introduce two of my dear friends and partners, and then I I'll allow them to say a few words as well. But I want to introduce our writer and director, uh, Terry George, and our producing partner, <laughs> Mike Medavoy. Please give them a round of applause. They have been very brave and, and steadfast in us accomplishing this task, so I just really wanted them to be up here with me. 
I, first, I just want to always say that uh, this film really wouldn't be possible without um, the dedication and courage of Kirk Kerkorian. <laughs> Kirk has also been a, a generous donor and supporter for American University of Armenia over the years. Yes. And really, none of it would be possible without him. I know this evening is about education, and we're going to talk about that for just a few minutes because I know we're on a tight schedule. But um, for me, I usually don't feel comfortable being, you know, speaking in these types of situations. But I think for, particularly for education and what AUA represents, uh, not only in the diaspora but in Armenia, it's very important to kind of connect what our film is about which is about celebrating our heritage, but also not forgetting the past and linking that with the future and the present, which is really what uh, is it's critical for not only Armenia, but Armenians in the diaspora. You know, in our film, we have a uh, homage to uh, Gomitas and my great grandfather sang in the choir with Gomitas and my um, family found a photograph of him with Gomitas. So it's very important to me that we remember our past. You know, I think education is critical. For denialists, their attempts are really based on lack of education or poor education. And AUA represents a future and a hope for our culture and also for society. In 25 short years, uh, the leadership of this institution and all of you have enabled Armenia to have a hope and a future. And um, our film plays a very small role in that just by reminding everyone that if we're not educated, if we're not enlightened, if we don't care about each other, terrible things can happen. And we can't allow that to ever happen. I encourage all of you uh, to participate in the life and future of Armenia. I'm very honored to be a new member of the Central Board of AGBU, which is one of the founders of our uh, AUA, and also a lifelong member of the University of California, both as a student, graduate student, uh, faculty member, and now administrator in the University of California, which is a partner of AUA. And I think that um, AUA can have no better partnership than AGBU and the University of California. I think it's very important that we continue to band together to make sure that this university is successful. And thank you all again for your support. And I'd like to turn it over to my colleagues just to say a few words as well. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, I'm from Ireland, so <laughs> I have an... Um, <laughs> I have an immediate and existential bond with Armenians. But the first, th the, th the comment I get most of all when I talk about having made this film is that I knew nothing about this. And w what, y what you collectively have done here tonight in Armenia with the American University and what we're trying to do is educate the world to the single least known and one of the most horrific events of the 20th century. And <laughs> and we've tried to do that in a way that communicates to the, the, the biggest audience in the universe. We know the Holocaust through Schindler's List. We know the Cambodian genocide through the killing fields. We know the Rwandan genocide through Hotel Rwanda. And now I want and we want the world to know the Armenian genocide through the promise. But <laughs> but as, as we've learned recently, this is a post-fact uh, era. We need, the, we need you. We need the core. We need the base to come out and support us when we release this film because we have the truth. And the truth is gonna be fought by some of the most powerful people in the world. 
we are undoubtedly going to have the Turkish government, their lobbyists, their friends against us. And we've got us. And we're going to tell the truth. <laughs> so I'm depending on you. I'll be there. I know you'll be there. We're going to get the truth out. And I, I can't wait. Thank you very much. <laughs> My God, Terry, um, that's like following Frank Sinatra. Uh, <coughs> you know, it would be, be kind of hard. Um, unlike Terry, who's Irish, uh, I am a Russian Jew born in China. <laughs> which, by the way, is true. Um, Actually, being here tonight and seeing a lot of faces I haven't seen before, uh, this is actually the 323rd movie that I've been involved with, and none with as much pride as this doing it and being a part of it. <laughs> for that, I, I want to. For that, I want to thank Eric and and Kirk and Terry. Uh, it was a, a team effort. And it hasn't ended. We still have a ways to go. And all of you in this room can obviously be helpful. Terry's uh, made his speech on it. And I implore you to do the same. Uh, I, too, went to UCLA, <laughs> incidentally. And uh, I'm <laughs> real proud that it supports American University of Armenia. And I can't wait to go and visit it and see what they've done. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you all. Remember, health is a human right, education is a human right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dear guests, please welcome tonight's keynote speaker, entrepreneur, philanthropist extraordinaire, Mr. Ruben Vartanian. Good evening, dear friends. I'm really very thankful to be here today with all of you in a special occasion of celebration of the 25th anniversary of one of the, I think, most important events that happened in <coughs> New Armenia. And um, I think it's a very symbolic to be here from representing Armenian person who was born in Armenia, grew up in Armenia, went to Russia, and now staying here with LA and talking about the American University in Armenia. I think it's uh, really something very special for me, personally. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate, congratulate all the people who are here today, the president, the staff, the board members, the representative of the University of California. And uh, I will try to speak slowly, which is not easy for me. Uh, and also, I have a pressure about timing, how much I can talk. That's why I will try to balance the, my willingness to talk very fast and at the same time deliver the key message that I want to do today, tonight. Um, before going about the key uh, message, I want to say a few words about myself. Despite, I'm sure some of you read about my biography. Um, I will, like I said, I was born in Armenia with the family with my father was professor, my grandfather was professor, and education was always our was key uh, interest for all our families. And this is why I'm so happy to continue this tradition now, maybe being in the, from business side, not being directly involved in education, like teaching, but I continue to believe it's one of the best profession in the world to be teacher. Um, I was living in, in the Soviet system, uh, which uh, was very different. I was later went to Russia when the Soviet Union collapsed, and I would grow up and become investment banker in uh, New Russia, which is was wild capitalism. And I work with international clients, and I learn how to work in a system with the different standards, where um, a lot of things is changing. And uh, I will say it's uh, one of the most important element of this all journey that I made with myself. It was 
understanding what you need to keep your identity, who you are, and learn at the same time how the situation is changing around you. And I want to pay the tribute to the people who, being so brave and so visionary in the beginning of the 90s, realizing of new Armenia, the main challenge, it will be not only electricity and water, but it's the key, the future of Armenia will be education. And what Luis Simon and <coughs> Mirana Bamian and Stefan Harabayan, Armenda Kirjan, and many others with AGBU, with the Armenian government, did it is just unbelievable. It's a really something which we need to look back and learn again and again how it's important to be bold with your vision. Sometimes it looks crazy, sometimes it looks people will not realize what you're doing today is important for, for tomorrow. And it's not being scared to do what is you feel is right. Um, today I want to talk about three things, about the challenges and the opportunities that we are facing, about importance of education, and about the legacy. And um, The challenges and opportunities that we are facing is not only specific Armenian challenges, it's a world transformation happening in our <coughs> lifetime. Um, not only Soviet Union collapsed, not only China become part of the world, and now Iran is becoming part of the world economy, and we only Cuba and North Korea left from the map of the, the uh, countries who is not a part of the world economy. But technology disruption, social disruption, political disruption, we see was going in Europe, what's going in the Middle East, what's going in uh, Russia, Ukraine, what's going in the US with all this election, which happened uh, a couple of weeks ago. It's uh, showing transformation happening very fast. And it's all transformations uh, bring some really significant questions for all of us. What will be, near what will be our near future? What will be the future of our kids? What will be, uh, what will kind of system will we live? And this is the <coughs> type of things which scare people and people's reactions sometimes can be quite, quite unpredictable and quite reserved. And that's why I say that looking at our history of Armenia, we've been <coughs> historically under significant pressure being in the border between civilization of the Christian Muslim, between the Roman Empire and Persians, between the Turkish and Russian and Persian empires. We've been under pressure to always survive ourselves and try to understand the changes what's happening around us and to be re respond some way. Today's Armenia is also facing some significant challenges. It's not only Armenia-like country, but Armenian nation. Because during 20th century, not only genocide happened in Ottoman Empire, but afterward, the Egyptian revolution, Iranian revolution, Lebanese uh, war, civil, now what's going in Syria, our main <coughs> diaspora where it was been uh, hold our heritage of hundreds of years, unfortunately be pushed, was pushed out and now we're living in other countries, in Canada, in US, in uh, Argentina, in Russia. And I think the question, what will be our response for this? How we like Armenian nation can continue to keep ourselves is a nation which is looking forward, a nation who is really showing the something which was always our best uh, in our history is being pioneering of many things what we did during the history of civilization and being example of the nation who been education was number one priority whereas people try to uh, show what they can do something which nobody else will do it i think it's a very important element because the driver of those has been always two elements it's a pride and fear and i believe the pride which we've been proud about what we did, how we did in the history, drive us many, many hundreds of years. But the question, what this will be today, our pride? Is, is a pride is a successful Armenia? Is a pride is only our own family success? Is a pride is about uh, what is our contribution in other countries? Or is a pride is really how we like Armenians can deliver something to the world, not only keeping up with our own problems, our own issues about what's happened with us, but also trying to respond what's going in the world. The same way like we responded when we, we accepted Christianity as one of the first nation, the same way like we did when we 
developed our own alphabet when we did uh, one of the first publishing in the books, when we respond what was going in the world, when we travel around the globe and being the first nation who opened the trading route between China to France. The nation who really we're not scared to do something differently, not scared to be out of the box thinking, not scared to be out of the comfort zone. And this is something which we've been doing since thousands of years. And the today the question is, what we are doing today is helping us to really feel what we're continuing the same way or we changing and something happening with us and we are becoming different because we are living now in a much more comfort uh, conditions in uh, countries like uh, US or Canada or France or Australia or Russia is not anymore so much dangerous for us about uh, scare about our lives but it's more question what we are doing in this society is how we adapt ourselves. Are we assimilating or we are staying like we've been staying in how thousands of years, our identity, keeping our identity, in the same time being good citizens of the countries where we've been living. Um, I think it's an um, Armenian story and what's going with Armenia is becoming very critical for all of us. We felt because of the what's happened in the beginning of 90s, there was earthquake, there was blockade, there was war, it was fear. It was fear what we, we, we saw how we can lose our homeland and we help. We help a lot. We help despite all the problems. We try to support and American University uh, was a very good example, not only helping but, uh, economically but also investing in the future of Armenia. But today's Armenia, and I'm sorry to be blind, is mediocre. It's okay. It's average. It's nothing going so bad what you feel in fear and not so bad, so good what you feel proud. And it's a question, what we need to do to make Armenia again the destiny, what we have been dreaming of hundreds of years saying is our El Dorado, our country which we are dreaming in the paradise when one day will be achieved because of the, our parents and grandparents left the heritage for us. And I think the question, what kind of Armenia you want to build is becoming more and more important. Because today, unfortunately for most of us, Armenia looks like the place where you are obliged to help. It's more like tax payment, additional obligation, which I believe is wrong. Armenia for us is investment. Armenia needs to become investment for our future generation because Armenia, success of Armenia is our success. It's not a question we just need to help somebody who is in bad condition. We need to invest in the future of Armenia because successful Armenia will help us to be successful here and the vice versa. And this formula we need to accept because otherwise we'll lose Armenia and we'll lose ourselves here. This is my strong belief. And I won't, <coughs> and I won't say education will be one of the key elements of success of Armenians. We've been successful in education thousands of years. We spent our second item of expense in Armenian family been always education. We believe in education and we really invest in education, a lot of effort. We've been speaking three languages in a time when nobody speaks, <coughs> nobody can write and uh, read. Most of the nations couldn't uh, really speak one language normally and they spoke many languages. Today, we're in danger because we lost uh, our advantage. Armenians in Armenia before speak Russian and spoke Russian now. They barely speak, speak Russian and they're learning English, but not very good. They don't speak anymore Persian and Turkish and Arabic. And just part of the, in going to Beirut, the taxi driver, Armenian taxi driver will speak five languages. It will be normal today. In Armenia, most of the, our elite don't speak uh, two languages. No, we're talking about three languages. It's why education is not only a question about is important of investment for the future, but important investment today. In the 21st century specifically, education become critical for success, not only socially, but also economically. Because main assets is not anymore land, how much land do you have, not about how much oil do you have, or how much other commodities do you have. It's a main question, how many smart people living in your country? And Elon Musk was born and grew up in South Africa, and he didn't went to the Czechia or Kenya or Russia or France, he went to the United States. And it's a question, what we need to do, what kind of a country we need to build, or despite being small, we can keep our own mask in our own country and attract other people from the region to come and study in our country and stay in our country. 
And I think it's one of the key challenges that we need to uh, respond, understanding that education will be one of the key drivers of the future of the world. And we have a competitive advantage. We are a smart nation. We are a nation who has a heritage of the smart, dedicated people who really want to invest in education. Um, Armenian University, uh, American University in Armenia, I think it was a great uh, example of success. And I think this 25 years showed what was how it's important was type of the institution being established in Armenia, like French University, like Russian University, like German University. We have a today unique competitive advantage. In Armenia today, we have uh, five different universities with different standards. Today, we all, the Chinese government opening Chinese school in Armenia. We have a uh, uh, Dilijan United World College. We have a uh, IPE. We have two more. We have a real projects which showing we can be regional hub for the uh, <coughs> education, definitely, despite all the problems with Turkish and uh, with Turkey and Azerbaijan. That's why I, I'm strong believer of education. I'm strong believer of education is the key driver of our success for the future. And also, I believe education needs to become in the next level. I think the American University in Armenia needs to become not only good for Armenians who live in Armenia, not only attract Armenians from other parts of the world come to study, but also non-Armenians to come and study in Armenia. I think this is one of the next challenges that I, will, I want to wish all of us to celebrate uh, 50 university, uh, American University in Armenia with the understanding we will get non-Armenian uh, kids to study in our university in Armenia. This is why with, with my wife, you know, we established United World College in Dilijan with many of our colleagues and friends. We got kids from 72 countries studying in Armenia. We get special um, <coughs> scholarship system which uh, attracting kids from all over the world to come to Armenia, study in Armenia. And also realizing importance of the what's going today in the Middle East, where it's been our homeland for many of our families. Unfortunately, the crisis came back the same places that we've been uh, suffering after genocide. And uh, today was going in Syria, unfortunately repeating the same stories. And we are facing the situation when the we need to remember this. And 100 years ago, many Arab families helped us, despite they been not very rich, not being so very successful. We've been quite poor people, but they helped our grandparents. This is why a year ago we established the special scholarship fund for 100 kids to, to study in Armenia and outside of Syria and Lebanon and Iraq, orphan, orphan kids to study in the United World Code system. Today I want to make an announcement that we will also want to establish special scholarship fund for kids from Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, non-Armenian, to study in Armenia in our American University in Armenia. <laughs> because I believe the only <coughs> integration, only global, only being a uh, regional hub who can help us, Armenia, to become successful. Um, I want to say also with my wife, Veronica, we're spending a lot of time and uh, I think one of the reasons why I invited here because she's a board member, not me. And I'm benefiting being spouse of the board member. <laughs> I want to pay tribute to the people, individuals who made a lot for Armenia, Armenian world, like, like of course, Boaz, uh, Nobar, uh, Gulbekian, Alex Manukian and his family with Luis Simon and Richard Manukian and Kerker Kerian. The one thing I want to say about this, what we are happening with our, our legacy is not only a question what we need to remember and we need to respect and we need to pay tribute to the people. Also, we need to understand what our <coughs> duties to be ready to support this type of activities because they did a lot of projects to try to preserve Armenian nation. But this project needs to be supported by today's generation because what we will leave to the next generation is very critical for us. We are growing up in a non-war, non-crisis situation, whereas the, our kids feel less pressure to uh, support Armenian heritage. We, some of them doing very well, some of them questioning why they need to continue to stay on the Armenian route. And we'll stay in Armenian route, like I said, only we'll be proud to be Armenian and understanding it's very important to support Armenian heritage because what was done by generation. And I think it's um, <coughs> important for us to collaborate, to come together. It's one of the most difficult parts for all of us because we are survivors. 
and survival, unfortunately, like was in, we, we saw it as in the movie, which was uh, great. It was, was done by uh, Eric Ishan and his other partners in uh, Kirk's uh, legacy. It's about how to survive. It's a different behavior. We need to go from survival to prosperity. This is a very difficult mental transformation for all of us because survival mood is means think small, family oriented, very close mindset. Don't look big ideas. Don't go big from uh, your project and try to build step by step like we're building our houses. One more room, one more room, one more room, adding to the houses. This is the typical Armenia in Armenians. This is why we need to change our mindset. And this is most difficult to change mindset. It's not a question about money. We made the analysis what needs to be done to become Armenia, bring Armenia prosper. We need to invest the next 15 years, $8.5 billion. And this number will look like a crazy number, and people say it's unbelievable, we cannot do it. But I want to tell you, last 15 years in Armenia, different people in different institutions invest $5 billion. Okay, this is not a big difference. The only difference is no being coordination. It was not collaboration. Because when you are <coughs> in survival, you're trying to stay yourself. And this is the family only support you, and you don't trust anyone. We need to trust each other. Collaboration means compromise. We are individualistic. We are very, each of us believe that our ego is number one. We need to understand our elite today is responsible for bringing us collaboration, one of the key elements of success of future our nation. And I'm hoping with the uh, Vachem Anukyan, Samuel Garbejan from Russia, who is my friend, um, leading leaders of the AGBU, leaders of the Shnaktusin, leaders of other parties, leaders of Armenian government. We, we realize we cannot be successful without collaboration. We cannot be successful without coming together and trying to find a platform which will help us to make the new Armenia and new Armenian world. You know, we all <coughs> know, uh, we all uh, remember this type of sentence when J J uh, Kennedy said, Kennedy said, the victory is a thousand of parents and uh, the defo defeat is, a, or is orphan. And we've been so many hundreds of years orphan. We are not ready to be thousands of parents. This is, I think, we need to learn what we are winner. We are winning in Artsakh war. And I want to remind you, it's a one, it's a very important event. We are winner of the Artsakh war. We are winner of Armenian independence. <laughs> and, and winner, and people who feel we're winner, uh, what, what, what mean, what's to mean, what's mean to be winner, what's to means to be prosperity thinker. It means you are thinking big, you have big ambitions, but also you're trying to understand what is your competitive advantage? How you can execute these advantages? How you can bring us all in the global world, which is very, very competitive. Nobody waiting us and saying, oh, when is Armenia finally will come prosper? Nobody wants to look at us and say, how we can help Armenia become prosper? It's our duty to make Armenia prosper. It's our duty to make Armenian diaspora successful in different parts of the world and help Syrian Armenians, help uh, Armenians in Argentina and uh, in America or Canada to feel it's a part of the big global network. I think you, most of you read it about our statement, our letter in the New York Times, which was written by me, Nobar Afean, my partner, which we did a lot of projects together, and many other my friends and partners, and very thankful to Ed Jirajan, Charlie, and many other people, Sam Simonian, who is sitting here, about global Armenians. And I think it's a very important point, which I want to finish my speech today, saying global Armenian is not just statement it's a question to change our men mentality to change our behavior to change our, our how we behave and how we're doing the all the businesses together and i hope it's global armenian will be bring this type of the new type of the relationship because we don't have a, so much time the, the world is changing dramatically and, and world is changing very quickly the only way we can become successful will we come together we'll invest in education we'll invest in our own future understanding what is our key competitive advantages? Bring Armenia is regional hub for education, healthcare, technology, finance, tourism. Making Armenian diaspora feel this is the investment, is not obligation. Bring, bringing the new generation feel proud to be Armenian, not only feel obliged to be Armenian because the grandfather or father was Armenian, 
and feel what what we're doing is really building our future. And I want to finish my my speech with the sentence which was said by Peter Drucker: "The best way to predict the future is to create it." Thank you. Եվ <gülüyor> Bir dönem ve gaygamı istanalıs. Güzem tezi poxanceli yergu batmuçun imusan oğagan yankes. Yergu hazar tvaganin avardeti naxagır taranı. Suryo naxkin naxaka hama hatsab. Mertbroti vgaygani paşxumi hantisutuna çeğiyar nagadvesa. Yergu hazar yerekin iraki baderazmi batjarov miçnagarki avardagan hantisutuna tartsiyar beği tünesa. 2006-ին ավակ դրոթը ավարտեցի եւ այս անգամ գրգին ոչ մեկ հանդիսություն դեղի ունեցավ լիբանանի բադերազմի պատճառով 2013-ին դամասկոսի համար սրանը ավարտեցի եւ այս անգամ ճշպարտ ապար բադերազմը մեկնարկած էր դամասկոս սուրիա դարձյալ ոչ մի հանդիսություն բոլոր նշվածներում պատճառով Բոլոր շվածներում պատճառով այսօր ինձի համար շատ հատուկ օր է որովհետև առաջին անգամն է որ պիտի դոնեմ վկայգամ է ստանալս մեծ հանդիսության Առաջին անգամն է որ պիտի դոնեմ վկայգամ է ստանալս մեծ հանդիսության ծեր ներկայությամբ զնողքիս ներկայությամբ եւ իմ հայրենիքից մեջ Yer Իմսենյակես մորը սենյակը կացի իրեն լավ լուրը դալու մինչ այդ Տրումփն է ինքավ սենյակիս մոտ լուրջ պատճար լուրջ վնասներ պատճառելով այն օրը ամերիկյան համալսարանը հայաստանի իմ կյանք փրկեց Երկրորդ անգամ այսօր է ես երբ ես վերջապես պիտի ստանամ մագիստրատուրայի աստիճանը որ ինձի լայն ցուրեր պիտի փանա Եվ ինձի թույլ պիտի դա նոր կյանք սկսին Հայաստանի մեջ։ Հայաստանի ամերիկյան համալսարանը բարձ համալսարան մեջ է որ գտասավանդ է եւ գփոխանցե գիտելիքներ։ Անմեծ գհարստացն է իբր անհատներ։ Մեզի ցույց կուդա ինչ կնշանակ է լալ թափանցիկ հարկանքի կարևորությունը գիտնալ եւ գսորվեցնե թե մարդիկ ինչպես պետք է վարվին իրարու հետ։ Ես այստեղ առաջին օրը սորվեցա գիսվել եւ գիսել գիտելիքը խմբագիտներուս հետ ինչ որ հավակական կորզի հիմնականն է եւ ես այսօր իբր ուսուցիչ գաշխադիմ ասմիտքը դեղավորել բոլոր բոլոր աշակերտներուս մոտ երկու դարվա ընթացքին ես ստացա ակիան հիմնաթրամի գրտանվաստը որինց կցնե ավելի ալ բարդավորության եւ բադաստանաբուծության արջեւ գուզեմ քաչալել է բոլոր ուսանողները ավարդողները ջիկչի խնայելու ինը բաց հայաստանի ամերիկյան համալսարանի մենք ուզենք որ հայաստանի ամերիկյան համալսարանը աջի եւ բարկավադի ի վերջո 
Այսօր ես ավելի ինքնավստահեմ եւ գիտեմ իմ կարելիությունները շնորհիվ Հայաստանի Ամերիկյան ամարսարանի։ Այս բոլոր ավարտողներուն գմախտեն փայլուն ավակա Հայաստանի Ամերիկյան ամարսարանի ցածախոսներուն եւ բաստոնեության հարադեւ հաճողություն, Հայաստանի եւ համայն աշխարի սեր եւ խաղաղություն, գրգին շնորհավոր բոլորիս, միանգ ուզեմ ասել, որ ես շատ փորձրած էի, բայց քիչը ավելի դժվար էր աստեղի խոսելը։ Շնորհակալություն։ Ladies and gentlemen, the American University of Armenia is honored to have with us this evening our 2016 valedictorian, Setrag Hovsepian, who traveled from Armenia to be with us tonight. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and honored guests. I am very happy that I'm here tonight to celebrate AUA's 25th anniversary. AUA has changed my life, and it is changing the lives of so many young Armenians as myself who want to help build our homeland. AUA is giving us opportunities we never dreamed we would have. It is giving us hope for a better future with high quality education. Student scholarship from Armenians in the diaspora is critical. I can't thank Mr. and Mrs. Akian enough for the scholarship they gave me. Without that, it would have been very hard for me to attend and afford AUA, especially that I moved from Damascus in 2014 and I had to work while studying to support my uh, parents. Tonight's gala is about raising money for student scholarship. I am very honored that I'm here tonight to share my personal journey with all of you and to let you know that all students who are receiving scholarship would be honored to thank you personally as I am to doing today for receiving this opportunity of good education. For those of you who have visited AUA, you know what, how great the place is. For those of you who haven't, I hope after tonight, you give a visit to our campus and um, I am sure you will be both amazed and impressed that such a beautiful and modern university exists just in the heart of Yerevan. All Armenians in the diaspora and Armenians in Armenia, uh, we have one mutual goal, which is to have a strong homeland. We need to create uh, a prosperous economy in Armenia so Armenians of diaspora can start their own businesses there. And to create that, we need to work together and um, work together to build Armenia, just like entrepreneurs built this country, America. So please continue to support AUA beyond tonight's gala. The more students we graduate with Western values, the more economically prosperous our country will become. Let tonight be the beginning of uniting all Armenians in the diaspora around AUA, around a university that will help make our nation prosper. Uh, I would like to thank some people. I think it's uh, the best place to do that. First of all, I want to thank all the gala committee. You are very nice and generous for inviting me. I would like to thank Ms. Lorraine Alexander and uh, AUA for giving me this opportunity to come here. I would like to thank my mom, Annie, and my dad, Mikhail, 
I would like to thank my sister Narine and her husband for hosting me here in California. I would like to thank, I know the list is a little bit long, I would like to thank three people who believed in me and gave me job opportunities in Yerevan. Uh, from AUA, Dr. Arpi Balian and Dr. Sergei Tantushian, and from Yerevan State University, Dr. Sona Donibian. And I would like to thank my former professors, Dr. Irshad Madyarov and Dr. Rachel Ferelli. I would like to thank my two friends, Suzanne Bagalian and Garine Palandian, for always supporting me. So those people, which I mentioned, whom I mentioned, helped me a lot during my journey so far. At this time, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Zaven Akian to join me on stage. Thank you so much. Dear Tetrax, on behalf of my wife Sonia and myself, thank you so much for your kind words. More importantly, I would like to make sure that these words of gratitude are expressed on behalf of all donors who generously contribute through scholarship and other financial assistance programs to AUA students. Tonight's theme is to celebrate the 25th anniversary of AUA. But there is one other important element of celebration or gratitude that has not been revealed very well so far. In general, we in the diaspora have the perception that assistance of any kind to our motherland does not get appreciated. In fact, we generally tend to believe that such assistance, assistance is expected of us and regarded to be an obligation. From, <coughs> from Sonia's and my experience with respect to AUA, this notion is far from the truth. You will not believe how much appreciation is expressed by all AUA students. AUA has excelled, has excelled developing an education platform through its Western values, openness, development of individual creativity, student instructor relationship, and most importantly, appreciation of AUA and its supporters who contribute to the well-being and future of these students. To illustrate this appreciation, I would like to read sections of two letters from students who received scholarships from AUA. We receive no less than 60 letters every year, and believe me that our family reads them with pride and tears. These two letters are examples of all others. So the first one is from Tavit Babajanian. Tavit is a freshman in the CS program. And he says, this, these are excerpts. Your scholarship has a great impact on me as for the first time in a long while I truly believe that there are people who really care for others. I have never been in an environment that mot motivates me to study as much as in AUA. AUA simply makes me want to become better than I was yesterday. As someone who has finished high school not more than four months ago, I have trouble adjusting with the changes that I am noticing in myself every day. The bachelor degree in my first is my first step towards realizing my childhood dream, dream, which is why the scholarship is so important for me. I wish to create our own Silicon Valley in Armenia. <laughs> first and foremost, I want to create an environment where people like me who want to endorse in this world out of pure scientific curiosity and excitement, won't be the minority. 
because in my opinion, this is the only way to cultivate an industry that strives to develop and achieve supremacy among others. To achieve this goal, I also plan to support AUA to the best of my ability, be it acting as a lecturer or as a new pillar. Adam, you hear that? I have already seen people like this at AUA, although not many of them are AUA alumni, but just people, mainly Armenians, who want to contribute to the betterment of Armenia, even if their contribution is just a small droplet compared to the others. And the second one is a little bit on more on the human side and a little bit emotional, and I hope that we may have some hand handkerchiefs ready. And this happened to be a, uh, well, Sonia and I were in Yerevan about five months ago uh, and uh, had a lecture that was launched by AUA uh, to um, recognize a lot of scholarship recipients. And that was a very touchy day, by the way. And it was wonderful. One of the students was pregnant, seven months pregnant, and about graduating. She happened to be um, a, a young lady who lost her father at a very early age, and the mother was supporting. And um, her name is Anahit Akopian, majoring in English and communications. And we met her, and she gave a book to Sonia, and we read that book, Sonia read that book, and she wrote back uh, about, about three, four months ago. And, um, and as she read this book, uh, I, uh, Sonia's response, she wrote this letter. And she says, Sonia and I had the My dear donor, first let me try to describe my feelings of the day when I received your letter in summer. It's hard to tell what was going on inside me when I was reading it. A wave of pride, happiness, gratitude, and blessing broke into my heart and came out of it in form of a huge smile and tears. Yes. Tears came out of my eyes, but those were tears of pride. I was, and I am so proud, that people like you not only assisted me in my education, but also wrote such an inspiring letter to me. Believe me, I've read it hundreds of times, and every time I promise to myself that I will never ever make a dark spot on the bright impression that you have given to me. As for my book, it is part of mine at, as the hardest period of my life has been put in it as a fiction. And your opinion of it is of huge importance for me and as a response to your encouragement to continue writing, now I promise you that I will. I will continue as you claim that I have a gift in writing. Thank you so much for the letter. It is really something precious for me and I keep it in my memory box, the corner of my best memories. Another important thing I want to share with you is that my baby was born on July 19. A cute girl she is. You know, when I saw you in face during the Akian luncheon, I decided in my mind that I am going to give my baby girl the name of the dearest donor. Dear Mrs. Sonia, I thought that the best and most sincere way to tell you thank you would be naming my girl after you. So my little Sonia is growing up slowly, and when she grows up a smart lady, I will tell her the story of her name and will encourage her as the carrier of your name to continue the kind of work that you do. 
let me set up my, uh, set, uh, sum up my letter by saying, thank you, thank you for being in my life, first as my idols of human, then as my donors of AUA. And she sent us a picture of the baby and so forth. So, <laughs> how powerful it is. I just want to let you know that there are many Davids and Anais out there who have similar experiences. And you should know that, the tru that they, are truly, they truly appreciate what we are doing for them. The future of Armenia, our pride, depends on these youngsters. So you should thank yourself for being part of this silent cultural revolution. Thank you for your support and please continue doing so. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to invite our precious Mrs. Alexander. What a night, what a night, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for coming and being with us this evening and celebrating the 25th anniversary of the American University of Armenia. As you look around this room, you will see people from all sides of the community, and that's what made this event so very, very special for us tonight. We had an extraordinary, extraordinary committee, dedicated, hardworking, and I can't thank them enough. Adam already introduced them, but I want to tell you that without them and their efforts and bringing all of you together here tonight, this would not have happened. So thank you to all the committee members. I really appreciate all your help. <laughs> this is a uh, very emotional time for me because um, I started working at AUA two years ago, and uh, well, they really didn't have anything in place in terms of the infrastructure. And um, in two years, I have to tell you, I've had the pleasure of mentoring some amazing, amazing young men and women. And I, I honestly, from the bottom of my heart, can tell you that if we did not have the development team up in Oakland, that we have today, we would have never, ever been able to do an event of this magnitude. So I want to acknowledge, first of all, Haig Boyajan for doing a wonderful job as Voice of God, and he's also our Senior Director of Development. <laughs> Haig, thank you so much. And also the team up in the Oakland office, Gaene Khachakian. Gaene, I don't know where you are, but Thank you so much. And Matt Senemagarian, Marissa Clark Howard, Lilia Darbinian. And I want to tell you, last but not least, a young man that came on in April. He was, he's Matt's younger brother, Rafi Senemagarian. And if it wasn't for Rafi, who helped orchestrate the seating of over 680 people, this event would not be as successful as it is tonight. So, Rafi, come out and take a bow, please. <laughs> Rafi? Where's Rafi? Come on, Rafi. He's very shy, but he deserves, he deserves a lot of credit, ladies and gentlemen. He really does. He deserves a lot of credit. Oh, amazing, amazing, amazing team. So, if you will notice that in the program tonight, there is an envelope that's kind of subtly tucked inside. And I know many of you have donated for this evening's event, but please do me a favor, take the program home with you tonight. And if you've had a wonderful time, which I hope all of you have enjoyed tonight's evening, think about donating to AUA, because it really is, as our president, Armandir Kriegian said, the best investment that the diaspora can make. It will bring the Armenian community together here in the diaspora, and it will make our homeland strong again. So please think about making another contribution. 
And uh, I just want to close by saying that uh, it's been a great pl uh, privilege for me to work for AUA. I've met a lot of wonderful people uh, in my two years here. And uh, this is a sweet goodbye, but I hope to see you all soon again. Thank you so much. And Kari <laughs> Kishev, thank you. A moment's attention, please. Uh, Lorraine, uh, on behalf of your colleagues in Yerevan and your colleagues in Oakland, uh, I have this gift for you. Uh, we truly appreciate the work that you have done, not only for the gala here, but over the last two and a half years. And I hope you can, uh, I would like you to open it and uh, describe it for the audience. gold chain with um, AUA on it. The, it's beautiful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It was very sweet of all of you. Thank you. I'm very touched. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us this evening and for your support for the American University of Armenia.